hey guys welcome back to my channel i am jessica and today i am bringing you something a little different i am going to give you a little overview of the free software called fire alpaca i first learned about this from my friend emma butcher but this is a free paint tool for mac and windows it is very similar to photoshop but it's like the stripped down version. Photoshop has all these tools that um, a digital artist doesn't probably need, but it has some actually really cool tools of its own that I can't wait to show you guys. So not only can you use Fire Alpaca for some digital painting, but you can also create GIFs over here. It shows you how to create a GIF animation. You can use it for regular animation. Um, there's some illustration techniques and also it can help you create some comics. So you just click right here, whether you have Mac or Windows, it'll download um, the newest version for your system. It also comes in like 10 different languages or something, so it's pretty widely accepted. It's a pretty small file. I think it was, it was less than a gig, I remember that and if you are new to it it also has a fire alpaca school or alpaca school up here um, it shows you little video lessons and walks you through some of the things that fire alpaca um, can do if you're really interested i just started playing around with it um, probably i don't know maybe half an hour to an hour and figured out a lot of stuff so i already have it downloaded so let me get that pulled up and I can show you a little bit about it in case you're interested. So when you first open up Fire Alpaca, this will be the ad that comes up. You just close it out and then there's actually no other ads while using the software, which is awesome. So over here on the left hand side, um, you have your toolbar and when you hover over it, it doesn't have a little pop-up of what the tool is, but if you look all the way to the bottom, down, down here, if you can see my mouse spinning around, it'll say what things are. So keep an eye out down here, and then we'll go over the tools. So it says, if you look down at the bottom again, this is the brush tool, eraser tool, dot tool, move tool, fill, bucket, gradient, select, lasso, magic wand, select pen, select eraser, text, operation tool, divide tool, eyedropper, and the hand tool. And I also have a Wacom tablet. So this software works really great with um, pressure sensitive tablets. I have a little tiny Wacom, Wacom Intuos I think. So nothing, nothing fancy. Doesn't have a screen or anything. So, so let's do, let's get our canvas up here. So you'd go to file new. And if you look at these two tabs, you can actually alternate between standard and comic. And I'll get into the comic one later. I think I might do a tutorial about making your own comic, but there's different templates you can do and bleeds and everything. So I'll go over that in a different video because I think that'll be fun to create maybe a comic or a one page comic, something like that. So it's good to know that that's what that can do for now. Um, but we're going to go into the standard canvas. You can drop these boxes down over here to do by pixel, centimeter, or inch. Or what you can do is choose a paper size. I'm in the U.S., so I am not too familiar with these paper sizes. Um, but I believe A4 is the closest to um, a regular sheet of paper over here. And when you click... A4 it brings up the size in centimeters but you can actually change it to inches and it'll tell you what it is so you can do that you can change the resolution of 350 or 600 I don't know if it'll let you type whatever you want I guess so but 
600 is really good scanner quality resolution so that's what I'm going to go with. You can choose the background color for either transparent or a solid color and then you would just click the box over here if you want to pick a different color but I'm just going to do white for this tutorial. Um, it'll save a history of what you of different canvases you create so if you use something a lot it'll be in here and then you can probably just click it very click it to access it very easily and we're just gonna click OK and here's our canvas so on your mouse there the scroll button if you scroll towards you or down it zooms in if you scroll up or away from you it zooms out so let's just start with a brush and let's pick a fun color and I'll show you how it works with my tablet so I'm pressing really light and then harder so it has thickness. The thickness varies quite a bit. Um, over here is where the brush control is and the opacity is this underneath. So you can change the brush size by making it bigger here. And if you notice on the screen, there's a circle that gets bigger and smaller. So this is, the circle is really big. That's how big your brush is. When you are over here, it doesn't show how big your brush is like it would in Photoshop. And I hear a complaint about that quite a bit from people, but it'll show you how big it is when you're choosing the size right now. So you just gotta keep in mind about how big it is after you let go of the button and draw with it. And then, like I said, this is the opacity, so lighter. And then you can also choose brush sizes over here as well. So it has a layers panel, just like Photoshop, new layer, um, duplicate layer, merge layer, you know, delete. And then this will show you the layers. If you want to hide a layer but keep it, you would just click this little circle here. There's a little bit of some settings, not too much. You can change the name. This is the opacity of the layer. This is just a general overview. Down here is actually where all the brushes are. Um, and they have quite a bit. So pencil eraser, airbrush, these are just like standard brushes. They have like some stamp brushes. I don't know exactly what, that's what I consider them because if you look, it's like all the leaves. So I'll show you what I'm talking about with the flower brush. Let's pick a color up here. And you can also change the scatter strength, a little or a lot, how, how big they are, how random they are, rotate, angle. So you can completely like customize these brushes and there's leaves flowers, particles, stars. There's a lot of them to play with. So let's pick the flower one. That was kind of pretty. So look how pretty that is to use as a decoration. Um, so you can go through and look at all these brushes, but one of the other brushes I really wanted to point out is called a symmetry brush. So let me change the brush to black and I'll show you what this does. It's pretty fun. So, look at that. It mirrors what you're doing. And there's several different ones. So there's Symmetry Rotate. This one's really cool. Looks like a flower. And then there's Symmetry Rotate 2. Oh my gosh, I love those brushes. I could play with those forever. So those are those. I just wanted to show you. Um, but you can play around. It says you can add brushes. I have not tried to do that yet. Um, I would have to do a little more research on that to see if you can add like maybe Photoshop brushes or if they have to be um, a different file type to be put in here. But you can customize these brushes 
quite a lot over here in the brush control panel. So something that's really unique to Fire Alpaca that I have not actually seen in any other software, even Photoshop, which Photoshop's the one I'm used to using, is up here at the top, um, there's these things called snap grids. And they're different lines that go over the canvas. And what you can do, for example, is this circle one. So you can choose the circle and then it follows your mouse and you can place it wherever you want on your canvas. And so say I want it right in the center. So I click it and place it and then let's take my brush tool. So when you have your brush tool, you would draw on one line in particular. And say you want to draw a perfect circle, but say when you draw it freehand that it's kind of wobbly and misshapen and looks bad, you would use this and it draws a perfect circle for you. You would just follow the line. So watch, I start the circle and I'm dragging left my mouse left and right, back and forth, side to side, and it only stays within that circle. I think that is so cool. And you can change it too. So say we want this radial snap now. So this little button locks it, this little circle here. If it's highlighted or darkened, that means it's locked somewhere. So if you unclick it, it'll unlock it and let you place it wherever you want. So let's place it right in the center. Let's choose a different color here. And then what we'll do is we'll draw out and these will help you draw perfectly straight lines and like I said you can watch me go back and forth right to left and it only follows that line and same thing with the eraser tool so when you choose eraser so I'm only erasing along the line so even if I go up and down and I'm dragging the eraser over the blue it's not within this line so it will not erase that so it constrains you to those lines and that can be so helpful when making drawings or perspective drawings or drawing perfect circles I just think that's so cool so let's do another one let's get rid of this one and let's do the squares And then you just lift it up when you want to go sideways because if you start to drag down it's not gonna go down you have to actually lift up draw a second line down lift up draw another line across lift up draw a line up so let's turn off the snap grids and let's do a solid background of just black and I'll show you some of the basic tools like this gradient tool here we'll put the gradient tool on a separate layer and it goes off the gradient uses these two squares so let's say we want I don't know a green and a blue so those will be the colors it's using so and then you drag your mouse in whatever way you want the gradient to go. So I want it to go diagonal, top left to bottom right. There's our gradient. Covers the whole canvas. And I'll put my black solid layer above that. And then I will just use this general select tool. And when it selects something, it brings up this blue area around it. That's just to show you that ignore the blue area, basically. So we selected the black area, so I'm going to hit delete, and it'll show, we'll select, deselect it, and it'll show the gradient underneath. Also has this text tool, which just like anything else, can pick the color let's do hot pink change the different sizes 
and these are the fonts that are loaded. I'm not sure if you can add your own fonts. Oh, this is a font that I loaded onto my computer. So, yes, you can add your own font. And I really love that font, actually. So let's make that bigger. So you can use settings here to adjust your fonts and the spacings and however you want to do that. Strike through, italic. You can play with this and left align it, center align it, and then hit OK. And here's your text. It's on a totally different layer. And it does have different um, blending techniques for the layers. So you can hit multiply, lighten. These are specifically for the layers if you wanted to play with that. So we got the magic wand select tool, which I'm pretty happy about. Um, it's one of my favorite tools in Photoshop. So I'm glad that that's in here. Eyedroppers, just like what an eyedropper does, <laughs> selects whatever color you're over and shows it up here. I like that you can type in the RGB if you want specific colors that you might find on the internet or Pinterest or codes that you can always stay consistent with by writing down the numbers and typing them in. Go through the menu, the drop down menus up here at the top and play around with adding masks and stencils and filters. I haven't played with all of them and I don't want to go into too many just because this video would get really long. Um, there is shortcuts for each of these tools as well as the snaps, the snap guides. These are the shortcuts over here. So one is off, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you can play around with the shortcut tools, write them down. Here's all the um, shortcuts for the tools on the sidebar if you want to get to know those. So I definitely recommend you download Fire Alpaca. Like I said, 100% free, very similar to Photoshop, and even has some of its own stuff that I think is really cool. Um, if, there, if you have questions about anything in here or would like to see some other tutorials about Fire Alpaca, please let me know in the comments below. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future tutorials. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!